Hey y'all, thanks for coming back. My name is Tim Broxton of VZB's Kitchen. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. I've got plans to go out and play golf with my friends and I wanted to smoke some meat. So I've just fired up the grill and I'm going to do some beautiful pork spare ribs. I had them soaking in a rub overnight. It's going to be fantastic. Check out the video on the rub so you know how to make your own homemade rub, okay? That's a soulful homemade rub. It's got garlic, paprika, chili powder, onion powder, a couple of secret ingredients that you'll discover on that video. But man, I'm going to tell you, I just pulled those ribs out and it smelled up my whole kitchen with just love. It's so incredible. So y'all stay tuned and I'll show y'all how to smoke some pork spare ribs. It's going to be super. Today is a beautiful day. We have incredible weather. And this morning I've come out here because we're going to cook our ribs. So that's going to give me time to go to church, play some golf, hang out with some friends, and then come right back here to enjoy some falling off the bone pork spare ribs. As you can see in my fire box, I have about five and a half to six pounds of charcoal. I'm using real hardwood charcoal, as you can see right there and I've just lit it with two alcohol cubes uh, it's a good way to light a fire if you don't have a fire tower but um, I'm really not a big fan of, of lighter fluid and I think uh, this is the best approach you can see here in the pan below the fire I have some hickory chunks soaking I've got about three pounds of hickory chunks soaking in the water and um, once I get this fire started up to the proper temperature and everything's roaring about 20 minutes after lighting I'm gonna just toss those chunks on there and we're cooking on indirect heat today so you can see uh, the smoker um, right here the ribs will never actually be on direct fire I'm gonna have that little chimney there drawing all that lovely smoke right through this grill This is the first time I've used this grill. There's two people I got to think that have taught me how to smoke, okay? On this big Brinkman right here, that was my brother, Joel Broxton. He is now uh, a master of both traditional smokers, green eggs, uh, you name it. He can smoke it on pretty much anything. Uh, another friend I have to thank is Matthew Gress. He had a green egg uh, long before many of my other friends and I got to experiment and play and cook on his grill with him and uh, he certainly enabled me to, to learn a lot and uh, he's got it down too. So he's a great smoker as well. Now if you're smoking on your grill for the first time you need to be very particular and document the exact amount of coal you use, the exact amount of smoking material you use, whether you're using hickory or mesquite. Of course we are using hickory, that's really the only way to smoke pork properly okay so from the time it takes for the fire to cook down to the time you add your your soaked hickory you want to document all these different steps so you know how to do it exactly right the next time the next thing involved in smoking is adjusting the ventilation on your grill um, a lot of people have uh, vents down by their firebox and they'll also have them on top of the grill so, um, trust me, Stephen Gurr, right here in Gainesville, Georgia, he's a friend of mine, he works for the Gainesville Times. That boy can smoke on a Weber. He has produced some of the best pork butt I've ever had, bar none, without a rub, other than salt and pepper, on a Weber. So, you don't have to have a special smoker to do some smoking. It's just a little easier in an indirect situation. So, um... Stick with us and you'll see what's coming off the grill. It's going to be fantastic. Okay, as you can see, the charcoal is burned for about 15, perhaps 17 minutes. And uh, we've gone ahead and thrown in our hickory chips. They've been soaking in water for about the same time that I'd lit the fire, about 15 to 20 minutes. And we're uh, ready to shut the grill down and try to begin to control the temperature. So an ideal temperature would be about 220, okay? So we're looking for 220 to 250 degrees 
200 is okay too, but I like 220 to 250. Maybe we're cheating, but this grill has a little thermometer on here that says things are ideal. Okay, so that's time to throw it on so we know we're in the ideal smoking temperature range. Okay, these are our ribs. You can see they've had a dry rub on them of uh, brown sugar, garlic, onion, all those uh, good things that I was talking to you all about last night. They've sat in the refrigerator overnight for about eight hours and they are now ready to throw on. And they smell, okay? They smell as beautiful as they look. So we're going to throw those on and we'll come back and uh, give them a try. So you can see I put a water pan in here about 10 minutes after I put the ribs on the grill. This is going to ensure good moist ribs. So how did I know to put in a pan of water? Well, my brother Joel, the guru of everything smoked, told me that's how you do it. So that's how I'm going to do it. Y'all stay tuned. It's not recording. Yeah, it is. I should see a little red light. I guess because we're outside. It's we're outside. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Okay. Oh. Okay, it's about 12.20 in the afternoon. I'm on my way uh, out to play some golf with my friend Tony. And I started this at 10. You can see the fire has died down, so I added additional coal. So now we have a total of about uh, eight pounds. I started with five. And uh, I'm just gonna close this lid, walk away from it, and the ribs are gonna continue to cook. So when we get back, it's gonna be scrum delicious. All right, how are you guys doing? This is Tim Broxton with Easy Bees Kitchen. We're back, we had a grill segment today, played a little golf, and I just wanted to sh let you guys know that I'm back home and I've got ribs right off the grill. I want to thank my good friend, Drain Watson, for coming over and pulling them all for me. Uh, he's on his way over to have some right now, so check them out. I'm gonna give you a good close-up of them right now. Check them out, y'all. That's how the good, the good ribs look right there. All right, you can see the color, absolutely beautiful. The meat has drawn back away from the bones quite nicely. Just an absolutely beautiful rack. All right, you know, we have to have some homemade barbecue sauce with our fantastic ribs right off the grill. Okay, they cooked for about four and a half hours today and I had a buddy come pull them off while we're out playing golf. Super. All right guys, this is the moment we've been waiting for. All this stuff is ready. Had a great game of golf today. Drain was nice enough to come over earlier. This is my good friend Drain Watson at Liberty Mutual here in Gainesville. He came over and pulled these ribs right off for me. I was so excited to come home and find that they were perfectly cooked. So we got some other buddies on the way. We are gonna get the first taste of these beautiful ribs. Very simple to cut. You just cut it right down the center. Look at them hot. See the steam coming off of them. It looks very nice. You want to be careful. I've thrown together some homemade coleslaw too. Very simple. We use our homemade mayo, a little white balsamic vinaigrette, and a squeeze of lemon juice with some fresh salt and white pepper. A little black pepper in there too for good measure. So we're going to experience these ribs for you right here live and the first bite we're going to take is without without the sauce okay oh yeah delicious it's all about the rub as i was telling you earlier in places like memphis they don't even bother with sauce we like to get messy down here in georgia i like the rub but I'm going to explain to you what the sauce does to the rub. It's going to be unbelievable. Pour a little here in Drain's plate. I call this my mopping sauce, okay? Just mop that rib right in there. Really simple. Good stuff. Nice orange color. That meat comes right off the bone. Good sauce. The sweetness and the savory all come out from both the rub and the sauce. It's like a, a taste explosion when, came, when they come together. We're going to get on some ribs. We want to thank y'all. It's my good friend, Jane Watson. 
I'm Tim Broxton of Easy Bee's Kitchen. Check me out at easybeekitchen.com. Until then, we'll see you next time. Guess I should have said it with you. We'll see you next time.